Okay, so we're here at episode 10 of the E30K swap. It's going a little slower than I thought. You got all these things, these cascading tasks that have to be done to get the car on the road and I was really hoping to be driving at this point, but we've had a couple bumps along the way. Let I me mean, just catch you up. Last video, the car starts, you could turn it on, very cool but I was getting an error on the ECU and it said there's a crank sensor signal problem. I was troubleshooting that, trying to figure it out and testing the voltage on the wire. Everything seems good. A lot of back and forth trying to figure it out. And then I was checking the actual pin out on the ECU to see if the crank sensor is going to the correct pin. I found that it was going to pin seven and, or sorry, pin 20, and it should have been on pin seven. Seemed, seemed wrong. So I sent an email to K-Power and I said, hey guys, I'm using your harness and all your stuff. Here's a picture. This doesn't seem right. Can you confirm? And the guy was like, hey, um, we got a bunch of harnesses in the shop. I've got our cars here. Let me take a look. And he's like, yep, that, that's good. Yeah, your harness is, that's how it's supposed to be. That's correct. So I was like, oh, okay, well, uh, let me keep looking. You know, a lot of unknowns on a project like this with a motor I've never turned on. And, you know, it's an old car to begin with that who knows what it, it was working before, but I mean, you never know with these things. So I was just checking all kinds of stuff, different pins and fuses and relays and wires, anything you can think of I was looking at, trying to figure out why this error was coming up and why stuff wasn't working. You know, about a week of this, I just was like, well, you know, maybe, maybe K-Power is wrong and this harness is messed up. I repinned the connector. I switched the two wires that I thought were wrong and there you go, everything worked perfectly, which was super frustrating because I found the problem probably in the first day of troubleshooting and now come day eight of just looking at random stuff because they told me that wasn't the problem. I go back to my first finding and it worked, so that really sucked. And they've they've done nothing about it. I've been emailing with them and they, they're not responsive and so. But anyway, the issue with that is in order to finish other projects, like to get the car on the road, I needed the car to be running. So that pushed me back a bunch of time, get the speed signal working. I can't test that because I'm not driving it and I can't figure out what's going on with anything else on the motor because it wasn't running right. Now that it's running, I can start to wrap up the other projects and it's not like there's a timeline and you know, there's no due date for this type of thing, but uh, it is winter now and it's snowed and the roads are salted. You know, I'm not trying to take this car out on a messy road. So hopefully it clears up and rains and washes it out and we can get this thing out there, but slower than I expected. So anyway, in this video, it's just a couple of random odds and ends, wiring up the speed signal, which again, I haven't been able to test, uh, wiring up the cooling system. And by that, I mean, the, the fan and the temperature probe and that type of thing. And you know, I, cause I can't get it up to temperature unless it was running right and I can't test it. So it's like, you, you get the idea. First thing on the agenda here is to wire up the electric fan. And I know a lot of people don't really like wiring, but I kind of like it. And honestly, I don't think it's as hard as people may think it is. So here I am just Googling the, for an E30 wiring diagram and I'm matching it up to my year. And then I'm scrolling down, looking for the auxiliary fan page, which is pretty far along the system into the AC section. I realize this may not be the best way to show a diagram on a screen, but here we go anyway. At the top here, it says hot and run only. That means you get power when the key is turned, flowing into the temperature switch. And this temperature switch is located in the radiator and has two different settings one being low temperature and one being high temperature. And these correspond to a low speed fan and a high speed fan. So in this swap, we're gonna be using the high speed fan. You really could use either, but it would be easier to just use the high speed because it already has a higher capacity fuse set up. To actually test this, we're gonna have to turn the key and the green and black wire coming into the temperature sensor will be having 12 volts. Then if we jump across the sensor, which is tricking the car into thinking the radiator is warmed up, the signal will pass through into the high speed relay. This relay is fed hot at all times, as you can see at the top here. And once the signal is complete, the power passes through the relay and into the fan. This three prong connector is the one from the diagram and it's usually located by a radiator. 
So we're gonna test if we're getting 12 volts in on the green and black wire, and we do. Now let's try jumping the temperature sensor here on the high speed signal. And again, this is tricking the car into thinking that the radiator is a high temperature. Now with the switch jumped, we should be getting 12 volts across the fan outputs, which is this red wire and brown wire. With that all tested and working, we can go ahead and put some connectors on these wires. I'm really starting to love using these Deutsch connectors. They were a little intimidating at first, but they're really actually super simple and the crimps really work. I always like to put a piece of heat shrink on any unused wires. So there's no chance of any shorts. For the fan power connections, I'm just gonna use some simple spade connectors, which I usually don't like to use, but the fan already had them on, so we'll just use them anyway. To finish up, we gotta mount this fan to the radiator. And again, just like many other things in this project, this is not permanent. This is just a temporary setup to get things going. All right, we got the fan wired up now. Let's see. If we short this sensor, it should turn on. And shorting the sensor is the same thing as the car thinking that radiator's up to temperature. Now we're gonna gear up for the speed sensor wiring. So this is gonna be our speed input into the ECU. And that's a pin, so now we're gonna need a socket. Get this wire here, crimp it on. that goes into this piece. I always like to put them together here so I can see how the pinout works. Just pop it through. And then it will click once you're all the way in. It doesn't come out. And then there's a little retainer piece right here. So on the car side here, we've got this wire, this uh, blue and yellow wire comes all the way over from the cluster and it's actually an output. So this should be a speed signal coming in, goes into our little adapter harness here and into the ECU. And for the ground, I just have it coming into the same connector and it goes through the firewall and out to the strut tower. There's tons of other options for the ground, but again, haven't tested it. Hopefully this will do it. 